and welcome to the Passport to Success podcast, where this week we are talking about the facts and figures of content marketing. I'm Becca. And I'm Simon. From Passport to Success, the online platform built by industry experts designed to help, advise, guide and support entrepreneurs and small business owners to success. Yes. Cool. We're back. Happy another week. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy Thursday. As always, it's our... Free tool. Free tool, free tool, so, free tool. Gone on a bit of a browse uh, this week to try and find a good one. And this one we've come to is Buffer. So you might have maybe heard of this before. It's quite a common tool within business and uh, marketing in general. And what it is, is it's quite a re- it's really good uh, time-saving tip for social media marketing. And um, it lets you schedule posts ahead of time oh, for your social media scheduling profiles. Scheduling posts is so... Good. Yeah. Like, I don't understand how people marketed on social media without scheduling it's, before. Uh, like, it's so time consuming. It just it just it lets you just do it all in one go and curate them all and get them done and then you can spread those updates across the next day, week, so month, whatever whatever your plan is. It just saves you so much time so then you can do it for so long for one day get it and then it's and then it's you don't have to worry about it for then the next week or so yeah. however long you schedule for a week in advance because then you're staying up to date with what's relatively relevant, up to yeah. date with news if you scheduled a month up to date you know you'd be doing month old news yeah exactly yeah so this um what they have is a uh, forever free plan which lets you forever connect a pre- free <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which lets you connect a profile from each network, either either like a Facebook or Twitter profile, and uh, schedule ahead ten posts for each network. So obviously you, you've got tools you can pay for, and you can schedule m- m- for many more. Po- you can schedule many more posts, mm-hmm. but you do have to remember this is free. So you only there's going to be limitations on what you can do. Is it only available for one profile? So say you run two businesses, you'd have to have two accounts, wouldn't you? Yes, you could just have yeah, the one account and yeah. run two businesses from it. So it's just for yeah so it's for one account which is great if you only have the one business exactly exactly and but it's it is to be expected because otherwise you'd be having to pay for it if you do eventually have the need for more than one account yeah then it might be time maybe to think about paying for this sort of thing but is if you've got only the one business and the one account that you need then this then buffer is a really really good tool to get started how important is social media that we keep going on about how important it is for your business to be on social media so this is definitely a tool that you you should try. Yes, definitely. So it is really, it is a really, really good tool. Definitely recommended just to sort of have a bit of a feeler of scheduling and what yes. needs to be done in social media. Um, because the it, more you do, the better you'll be. Exactly. It's practice. Yeah. So go and check it out. It's if you type buffer into Google or any search engine, it's the first thing that pops up. So you're not going to struggle to find it. B U double F E R. And that moves us swiftly on to what we're going to be covering in Content this Content Marketing podcast. So so we all know how important content marketing is, you know, whether it's video, whether it's an infograph, whether it's a blog, blog you know, podcasts, a, a, a conversion and traffic that you can get if you don't, if you do your content marketing right, it's, it's incredible. Found this article on Neil Patel's website, and there's 17 different charge, charge, charts which show different ways that content marketing is heading. And it's, it's a great, a good article. We we thought we'd discuss it in in depth. Yeah, we thought it'd be really pertinent to to our listeners. Yeah, what we've done is we've just pulled out what we think are the important charts. The for highlights. Yeah, we don't want to go through the full list because otherwise we'd be here for like an hour talking about them all. So we've just plucked out the ones which are the most relevant for people who are looking to improve their content marketing and it's a great way for new business owners to understand content marketing and what's actually best to get the best results Mm -hmm. the first graph what was shown uh, looks at social traffic i would have thought it would have been on the increase well yeah because it's always in your day-to-day lives people are spending more and more time on it but i'm guessing people are becoming more aware of it yeah i mean you've got different platforms like say for example instagram i mean instagram is on the rise yeah. It's gotten more and more popular. More and more people are using marketing because of the. I mean, we spoke about it in recent podcasts. The development on oh, the shopping, shopping. At, uh, the shopping that you can now do through it. But social shares have actually been on the downfall since 2015. If you've been going for maybe four years, spoke to someone who's previously said they've had really good results from so using social sites, and you're not getting them, don't worry too much because they've been on the decrease for four years, and it's expected that less traffic will actually 
occur. Okay. So it's not it's nothing to worry about. It is natural because it's it's on the decline. But still, still use them. It's still oh it's still yeah, very it's important for definitely. brand awareness and keeping in contact with your customers, creating your tribe. I mean, we t- we talk about all the time how important social media is, and you can't disregard it no matter what. It's just a little. Don't worry if the results um, aren't as good as yes. you're expecting, because it's it's just that the social shares have been declining we'd still recommend it 100 percent to use social yeah. uh, uh, your social media to market your content no like there'd be no issue with that at all uh, the other graph that we looked at was the percentage of blog traffic per by channel and you need to use an omni-channel approach for your marketing but focus search as seo made up a whopping 51 percent of a blog's traffic and social media was way back in fifth so that's what ca- you know, carries on from what we were saying that social media is decreasing. I think I wonder if it's because people are becoming aware that they're spending too much time on it, and people are making obvious action to stay off it less. Yeah, I mean, we've discussed it before, haven't we? Where it might have been even in the last Screen podcast. Screen times where, as well. Yeah, if you just stick to a single channel and the channel goes down for some unknown reason, you can't reach a market. Like Facebook did. Yeah, you, you, and Instagram they you, went down. That's it. Like you can't reach a market. Whereas if you're using like an omni-channel approach. You you're able to say, for example, Facebook went down again. You've still got all these different channels that like, are still usable. Like Twitter saw yeah. a, a surge of users exactly. because Facebook and Instagram were down. So it's still you need to make sure that you have you spread across multiple channels. Otherwise, you're going to lose traffic. Another one is number of articles that you need to write. So according to this post, you should be aiming for around four to five a week. That depends entirely on the resources you have at hand. Don't worry if, if you know, you've, there's only Single one of you. Single person, it's you. Don't, Don't worry. Right, four to five a week. <laughs> Try and at least get two out a week. We think two is a good number to just keep your your brand awareness ticking over. It keeps giving your followers, your clients, little juicy bits and nuggets. Yes. Uh, and it keeps you in their periphery, in their visual, in their memory. It just it gives them what they want from you, and you're keeping their... You're making sure that their attention is still towards you. You're giving them, they know that they can get reliable content two yeah. times a week, yeah. which is perfect. And then when your team does develop, you can then start moving it to three, to four, to five, and then you're perfect. If and then... you have five a week, it can be too much, and they might switch off. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've unfollowed people on social media because I'm just sick of seeing their posts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, gotcha. it's a... It's a balance, and as and as for length, we say, and this article says, we are over a thousand plus words. If you're hoping to rank on the front page of Google, don't write for the sake of writing, though. If it's a thousand words of nonsense, yeah, it's no. better to do five hundred concise words than a thousand words. You know, like when you see all these jokes about people trying to make the word count, yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. a lot of adjectives. It's like at uni, I think. I, yeah. you know, when I went back and I read one of my. Um, First year, what's it called? Essays. Essays, yeah, yeah, that I had to write. And you know, <laughs> when you look back and you're like, oh my, I was fully trying to make as mu- as many words as possible fit into what I needed. It was, it, it was so unnecessary. So you just need to make sure that if it, if you know it's going to be a thousand plus words, go for it. But yeah. don't if you know that it's only going to be a short, quick short snap. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're hitting the points. But you can't drag it out. If you practice writing and write more and write more, you'll get better. You'll get better at being more concise. Mm. As we, I mean, we've mentioned plenty of times that a blog, you need to have a blog on your website. It's essential to, for example, on this blog, we found that, uh, on this article, sorry, we found that 24% of your customers first find out about your company through through your blog. Yep. That's almost a quarter, of, uh, pretty much around a quarter of people found someone's web uh, company from their blog. It's essential that you still use your blog yes. and and make sure a blog is implemented into your business and this it's like pair, a funnel, isn't yeah it? yeah it's it actually is it's it's an area which I think a lot of people that might not have seen people in their industry using a blog or competitors not using a blog and then they think oh, we don't really need one you still need you, you need one because the people who are interested are good like your target market will be interested in the content that you're providing yeah exactly and it's paired to conversion so if you have your audience reading your blogs they're more likely to convert than someone who doesn't read your blog because they feel that they know you, they've 
got to know your brand, they understand what you're selling, so they, they decide to buy from you. Exactly. Because people don't just pay for something without knowing anything about a company. It's like, get them into your tribe, get them into your brand, treat them nice. Yeah. You know, respect the fact that they will Wine and spend dine. money with you. And then give them good content, then they're more likely to convert. So uh, if you're trying to convert readers through your blog, remarketing and email marketing are the front runners here in the, on the graph. Those special offers can work, the charm, as well as call yeah. to actions. These two were in a league of their own on the uh, article. The what remarketing allows for is companies to reduce their cost per acquisition. Your remarketing to customers who have previously been interested in your company, the you don't have to spend as much money. Yeah. So your price drops that you so your price comes down yeah. and then you're much more likely to convert readers mm -hmm. into uh, paying customers and it helps you improve your blog. So you need to make sure that your blog's in really good condition as well. So you need to update content and make sure that the content you're providing is valuable. It goes without saying that you can't just constantly churn out content that's going to run out of date in a week. You need to make sure that it's that it can be relevant for you you can update it and make sure that it's easy for people to read a month, two months, a year yeah. down the line and it's still relevant. It's sort of yeah. evergreen content, so you need to make sure that it's up to date basically. Yes. And in terms of what type of content Yes, a lot of it's going to be text and tight. With images, it, it can be a bit daunting when you see a thousand words without any images. Mm. So put some images in there. You should also start doing video and audio content. People like videos. Casts are great. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. saying and people like to listen to podcasts on the go so on their commute to work you can be podcasting rather than reading so to think about other ways that you can reach your audience this is i mean if you're interested in the blog in the article go on to neil patel's site and uh it's called content marketing future and if you want to look at it a bit more in depth then he's he's done a huge article on it yeah. uh, it's definitely recommend looking at it. You shouldn't um, be afraid to try something new like a podcast no. or a video. Your first one's not going to be perfect, no one's expecting it to be, but the more you do the better they'll be and you might reach some new audiences with it. That's it for this week, thank you for listening, stay up to date with all things Passport to Success and we'll see you, hear you, speak to you in the next podcast. Bye! Bye.